Thank you guys for sitting down and talking to me. Uh, I watched American Skin last night. I thought it was a phenomenal film. It was very powerful. And uh, one of the things that stood out to me in the movie and actually in all police killings uh, is that the shooter, they had a preconceived notion of who the victims are, right? That always happens in every shooting. I was scared or I thought I fear for my life. That's, a, that's in their mind. They see us as a threat and according to the law alone, it's often justified. Now, because we see a lot of the police get off. Now with that in mind, and this question might seem weird, but it's a simple question, but I think it's a deep question too. Because outside of who you guys are as actors and actresses, the public has a perception of who you are. But to you, and I guess we can start with Sierra, who are you? Like, who, do you, who would you say you are if you had to describe yourself? If I had to describe myself, I am someone who, well, first and foremost, I'm a child of God. Um, I do believe all things are through him and that he already has a plan. I do wholeheartedly believe that he has a plan for everyone. And you might not understand why certain things are happening in the moment, but it's weird how it comes, everything comes around full circle and what goes around comes around. And then you sort of have this aha moment, like, okay, now I know why I had to go through that to get to where I am now. So, um, in addition to that, just someone who is trying to live truthfully and authentically and through a business that isn't always that, I would say. So it's it's a um it's a journey. Yeah. How about you, Shane? Uh I am a young black man, first generation in America. My parents are from Jamaica. Uh, I am also a child of God. And that was a great uh, way to start that, a child of God. Um, and I'm a person, uh, I, I love to act, man. I love to, 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 make, to make movies. I love to tell stories and I have a dream. You know, I've had a dream ever since I was a kid of doing, of doing what I'm doing now and I'm living my dreams. Mm. And, um, I'm so grateful for that. Um, yeah. But as well, I just, I want to live an honest and a good life. Uh, just truth, truthful to myself, truthful to my family, to my friends. I want to love everyone as best as I can. Yeah. Just, when it's all said and done, I want to say I, I did it. I did it the right way, the best yeah. way I knew how. That was beautiful. Thank you for sharing. Mrs. Calloway. Well, I am a woman of God and I am very multifaceted. Um, there is a lot of definitions I think that describe me. Of course, I'm a woman, a black woman. I'm a mother, I'm a wife, I'm a sister, I'm a daughter. I'm a very good friend to have. Uh, I have morals, I have standards, I have beliefs. I am an artist, I love what I do. Um, I really love what I do. I feel totally blessed. I'm very grateful. I'm a very grateful person. Uh, I know that things don't have to be for me the way they come out in my life. So I'm grateful for that because it could have taken a turn several different times in several different ways. Um, I, I love life. I love simple things like cooking. I love family. I love getting together. I love I love young people. I love giving to young people. I love mentoring. I love uh, bringing people in. I'm very nurturing. Um, I'm strong. I'm positive. I'm powerful. I'm colorful. I mean, there's a lot of facets to me. Uh, but the one thing I am is I am true. I am committed. I am uh, serious. I'm a woman of my word. If I tell you I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. And I, I, I've learned a lot on the way. And I stay open and I believe in accountability. I believe in ownership as I teach my kids and the kids that I mentor. I try to practice what I preach and I believe that I do. So I'm a lot of things, yeah. but I do, I love fiercely and I love a lot. Thank you for sharing that. Um, when your character is introduced in this movie, uh, 
they say you've been helping out with raising Kijani. And as a man who grew up without a father, I was lucky enough to have two amazing men in my life, uh, my Uncle Richie and my stepdad, who just lost his life, God bless, God bless his soul, and my stepdad, who just found out he's facing cancer. Um, I want to know, outside of your parents, was there anyone who helped raise you or who helped um, raise your kids uh, who you would like to, and how do they impacted your life? Well, I mean, of course, you know, my mother was there, but um, my mother was a single mother until she uh, married my stepfather. And I always give him credit because he married my mother that had three kids at the time. Uh, they didn't stay married long, <laughs> but she doesn't really like him that much right now. <laughs> but he didn't desert us as the father image that he presented. Uh, as far as people who've helped me with my children, I mean, it's a village. I mean, I had a smaller village then, but my kids have a great, had a great village. They are now 30 and 26. But I had a housekeeper, her name was Miss Lydia. And she came to work with me when my youngest daughter, who's 26, was eight months. And she just left my home literally about two and a half, almost three years ago, because she just kind of aged out. And when I tell you this woman would have taken a bullet accidentally for my girls, that's how much she loved them. Now she didn't raise them, but she allowed me to go work and do what I needed to do in the industry, knowing that they were totally taken care of. I did all the cooking. She was a great cook. So I did the cooking and stuff, but she uh, helped me pick them up from school and she did a lot until my mother moved to town to help. So uh, it's a village. I mean, I think that we are all lucky like yourself and, and sorry for your loss when you have other people in your life because parenting is wonderful and I'm a great parent. I'm a hands-on parent. I'm, I've always been very active. I, I've taught my children a lot. They're really great women, I think. But it, it's more than me. It's their grandparents. It's their dad. It's Miss Lydia. It's my girlfriends who jump in. And, you know, we help, help each other because a lot of our kids grew up together. We helped each other with our kids. So, yeah, doing that role playing a grandmother that helped raise. I don't have any grandchildren yet. Fingers crossed. Um, but, yeah, that's what we do in our community. We raise our children. Yeah. It's a village. Mm -hmm. Whomever is handy at the time, you do the work that's needed. Beautiful, beautiful. Yo, again, watching this film, I was just overwhelmed with emotions at some part. Uh, there's a scene where uh, I think it's Shane where you ask him, like, what is he going to do? And then and then uh, Lincoln goes, I don't know yet. That scene just hit me because I'm like, because I didn't know the ending of it. I'm in the movie and I'm like, I don't know how this is going to end. Was there a moment where you guys faced a difficult decision and you didn't know what you were going to do and how did it turn out? How about for you, Shane? Oh, wow. That's a great question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, that's a great question. Um, yeah, I mean, I think you face a lot of those moments as an artist in this business. You know what I mean? I feel like especially to, towards the beginning, which hopefully I'm still at the beginning, um, you you don't know, you know, but that's that's the, that's the faith. You just, you trust in God. You trust that you have been brought along this journey for a reason and that you have the gifts and the tools that you need necessary to, to make the decision and, and for it to pan out. Um, but yeah, there've been, there've been a ton of, a ton of, of, times when I just didn't know, you know, making a decision on, you know, where to go to school, what to, what to, you know, when you come out, what project, do I take this project? Will I get this project? How will I pay bills? How, you know, all of that, that the artist that, that comes with the artistry. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and when you're a child of God, you know that God is with you and it works out, which is so beautiful, right? So I, know, beautiful. But I don't know why it comes as a surprise every time. It does come as a surprise. It's it like really you does. didn't like we don't remember <laughs> that it has yeah. worked out before and it will continue. Right. Know? I love that, man. Um and you have another line where it goes, Great nations, uh great nations are great be not because they are oppressed, but because they liberate. And as black people 
we walk through America at any moment and interactions with cops or if you're in a rural white town. For me, it's like, oh, I don't know how this is going to behave. Uh, Sierra, for you, have you faced a situation where you felt like the color of your skin might affect how something might turn out? A hundred percent. Um, specifically being a black woman of, of lighter skin, I, I, you know, you never, you don't fit in anywhere. It's like you, you know, already what they say and it's true. It's like, you're too light to be in with the, with black people. And it's like, you know, you, they, you have to group yourself. You have to put yourself in a category. Otherwise then you're shunned. So I just felt it was really, I still feel it's really interesting how in within black communities, we're always pinned against each other. Like we're the only, I'm not going to say we're the only, but communities of color, they're not, they're not taught to stand together, especially black women. We're always taught to be in competition with each other, not to encourage each other. And I always feel a, a win for one person is a win for all, honestly, because, um, you know, that's somebody else's, that's somebody else's, inspiration that's somebody else's inspiration to to say okay I see myself on screen then I can do the same thing and regardless if it's me or whoever I feel like you know it just needs to have we need to be more united and I feel like we can get so much more done together than separate Mm -hmm. um I, I want to just ask you I don't know if it affected you the way it affected me but there's a there's a Nate Parker scene from the great debaters where they go, uh, who is the judge? The judge is God because he decides who wins and loses, not my opponent. Who's your opponent? He doesn't exist. And you talked a little bit about the competition that in our mind that we put ourselves with, with our peers, you know what I mean? And just society puts us in. Who's the best actor now? Is it Kalua? Is it Lakeith? Is it, like we all put ourselves in this competition. Do you have competition? And that's to anyone. Do you guys have competition? Do you think you do? Or is it all in your mind? And will you get what you earn? I think for me, being in this business a long time, and I hope I can share this with them, the only competition you have is yourself. Because what is yours is yours in life, not just in the industry, in life. And what you work for, you know, you reap what you sow. And not all the things that you work hard for turns out either. There's some things you just aren't going to have. It just isn't meant for you to have it. I mean, I don't care how hard you work. I can take singing lessons every day. I'm not going to sound like Beyonce, bottom line. You know what I'm saying? So the only competition I have is myself because at the end of the day, I'm the one that's going to make or break who I am, my uh, future, my legacy. It's up to me, me and God. We got it together. And what I'm going to be blessed with, no one else is going to be blessed with. Now I have peers who may seemingly be doing better than me because that's their journey. I mean, there's some things I wish I would have gotten or wish I had, but it just wasn't in my cards, you know. But I think when you learn how to be grateful uh, for what you have, you can always see the glass half full as opposed to half empty. And just know that if you really believe in yourself and you work hard, what you're going to get, you're going to get. And what you're not, you just have to to go to yourself. If, is, if this is as good as it gets, Am I okay with that in life? Mm. Mm-hmm. And that's the question. Sometimes you have to ask yourself, if this is as good as it get, am I good? Yeah. Thank you guys for taking the time to chat with me. I appreciate you. I think my time is up. But when God has something for you, when he instills it for you, nothing no one says, nothing no one does can take that away from you because God gave it to you. He is the all powerful. Thank you guys for having this little spiritual blessing. American skin is dope. And I appreciate the art you guys share with the world. Thank you.